So for passive building, the backstop U value for ele elemental walls and roofs is typically 0.15 watts per meter squared degree Kelvin. But more often than not, lower U values are required depending on building design, orientation and shape, for example. I built a passive house recently myself and elementally the U values were about 0.1 uh, watts per meter squared degree Kelvin for the walls, roofs and floors. And I was lucky to have Roman on board with me to work on the air tightness side of things and the insulation side. In Roman's house here, based on the orientation, the microclimate surrounding the building, uh, proportionate glazing and so on, the U value on the walls will have to meet quite an onerous standard, similar to mine, of about 0.09 watts per, per meter square degree Kelvin. Um, now Roman, perhaps you can explain in the case of your wall um, how you're going to meet that U value of 0 0.09 based on what we see here because I see you have a twin stud system here and perhaps you could explain your wall makeup and how you're going to achieve that. Yeah. So basically I have an external um, load bearing frame made of uh, 6 by 2, okay. 150 mil by 50 mil. Okay. And then I have a clear space here of about 150 mil and another internal 4x2. Okay. Um, the total depth of the wall is 400 millimeters. Okay. And it's full filled cellulose at the later stage. Okay. Um, so you can see this is, I was using a diffusion open racking board on the outside. Mm -hmm. And we use those plates um, to thermally break the, the stud. So basically, we don't have a a solid timber or a solid structure going all the way from the outside to the inside. Okay. And then it's going to be pumped with dense pump, dense filled cellulose. Like okay. The whole way. And then on the inside for a tightness, um, are you going to use a membrane on the inside for a tightness? So on the inside, I'm going to use the Proclima Intello membrane. Okay. Um, that we're using most of the time and it will go to the face of the stud. Okay. And on top of the Intello membrane, I'm going to have a horizontal counter button mm -hmm. as a service um, okay. area. And that will be insulated with thermofleece sheep wool? And that will be insulated with sheep wool. Okay. Sheep wool again. So, so the, the total insulation at a later stage is 450 wow. millimeters. Okay. Quite a lot. <laughs> That's incredible. And for the cellulose, and uh, you're using Darmstadt cellulose in, in this area here. But the cellulose conductivity is about 0.037, I think, for the cellulose you're using. Um, are there benefits to using the cellulose? What's your experience? Like, a lot of people may use a bat or, or other materials. Why would you prefer the use of cellulose over other materials in this case? Because I see you do have quite a wide cavity, and you've also made some specific preparations. I can see a membrane up here for some reason, the Solitex. Maybe you could explain. Yeah. Why you use cellulose and what prep you needed to do to fit it? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the choice of cellulose, um, if I start talking about the benefits of cellulose, I probably mm. would be talking another hour or so. Okay. Um, I do it a bit shorter. Um, me being a cellulose installer is yeah. actually part of it. So it's, uh, it's the, for me, it's the most accessible, easiest uh, installation that I'm confident this with. But <clears throat> the real benefits here are that I have a very, um, how would you call it? A very, um, not very even build-up. Mm. Like, so it's know, quite a complex build-up. You've quite, quite a, complex, a number exactly. of cavities like, and shapes to fill here. So you come out, you want to get around the plates, mm. you want to get in between the studs. Mm. Um, further down, you can see you have a bit of a step here. Yeah. And I'm really keen to have an absolute gap-free, full-fill insulation. Okay. And with cellulose, that's easy to achieve. Okay. And cellulose has its slight limitations as in you can't just have like say a 10 meter high void and just fulfill it with cellulose okay. at, some, at some stage the weight will be just too heavy okay and that's why we were using off cuts of the solitex membrane okay to break the void at about the height of three meters okay and separate it from the from the void of the roof so you create a chamber where you can contain the cellulose and reach the required density so you don't have any settlement and you get a that's, consistent installation. That's correct. That's yeah. what you're doing yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really, really interesting. So the cellulose in a way, I'd imagine once you pump it in here, it compacts into an almost semi-rigid bat form almost. Like you could take away the internal membrane and even though it's 
400 millimeters thick, it'll self-support, it'll stay in position. It, I think you've shown me that once or twice. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. Uh, it's blown in in a density that it won't sack mm. ever. <laughs> and, okay. Um, you could cut away the membrane and it would sit there like a, yeah, like a firm, like yeah. a firm mat. Like, yeah. So what you're doing here is you're using a material that may go to landfill or whatever, but it's been recycled, it's a recycled newspaper, and it's been pumped into the walls as an insulation. So it's yeah. really good, a good example of circularity and using low embodied carbon materials. But also, not only do they have a low environmental impact, but exceptional technical properties from a breathability point of view, from a thermal point of view, acoustic, and all the other benefits that you could speak for over an hour about. It's fulfilling yeah. many properties there. You mentioned, so. you mentioned a lot of the properties that I really mm. like with Telelos. Um, one is obviously the seamless install, 100% gap free. Um, the next one is the ecological side of it. So it's actually a carbon sink. Mm. So one kilo of cellulose can hold 1.2 kilos of carbon. Yeah. So I'm building a big carbon sink here in a way. Okay. So it's recycled material. And um, <clears throat> you said, like you mentioned, going to landfill. Yeah, at the end of the life, mm. it's fairly easy to, um, to, to get rid of it or to mm. dump it. Like, you know, it can, be, can go into landfill. It's mm. not doing much harm as mm -hmm. such. But what I like about it is the longevity of it as well. There is no reason for cellulose to break down over the lifetime of a building. So I would expect my mm. cellulose to be good for the next 80 years. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I've seen examples in conservation of older buildings of wood, wood shavings being in buildings between studs for over 100 years and still perfect just yeah. between walls and in, in, in attics and spaces. So it shows there may be an idea or an impression that these materials may not be durable, but like any material, once they're fitted correctly, the materials will last for the life of the building. As long as the building is weathertight, like any material, they're going to last for the lifetime of the building. Just one other point, Roman, um, I forgot to mention here, is because you have this separation in the stud, of course, that thermally breaks the stud now, because in some cases you may have a solid stud going through the wall, but by creating this this twin stud, this double stud, now when the silos is pumped in, you're completely thermally breaking the studs, aren't you? So then yeah. you're reducing the heat loss through the structural envelope. Because yeah. often timber studs could account for 12 to 15% of the wall area. But now because you've done this, you've now completely thermally broken that stud, haven't you? With the silos. Yeah, <coughs> and it's one, <coughs> it's one aspect of a twin stud system that I really like. Mm. It's basically that, um, it's all one big void, starting obviously at the floor, yeah. but then it's one big, almost uninterrupted void up the wall, along the ceiling, along the roof, down and across, and um, the, it's really only those 12 mil plates here yeah. that have full contact from the inside to the outside. Everything yeah. else is completely separated. And that's where the sheep wool the thermal fleece on the inside running across here, even that small point, that's going to be insulated as well. So there's going to be zero thermal fleecing. Yeah, <laughs> very good. In the, okay. in the timber build up anyway. Thanks, Roman.